Hi, and welcome back. Today is Good Seed Sunday. It's a day where we like to remember that our God loves to create. Let's get started. Good Seed Sunday is a day organized by Arosha, and it's a day committed to bringing some much needed attention to this created world. So, to celebrate that, I thought we would spend some time in Genesis 1 this morning. Let there be light! In Genesis chapter 1, the writer gives us the account of God creating the cosmos. It's a fantastic story and one of my favorites in the entire Bible. But let's dive in. Before anything, there was chaos. God hovered over the waters. In the original Hebrew, the word for water was tehom, which actually is taken from the Babylonian story of creation. In that story, Tiamat was the Babylonian god of chaos, and all of creation came out of her slain body after a great war between the Babylonian gods. In Genesis, the writer is trying to bring attention to that Babylonian story by using the word to home. To home is a word that's closely connected to Tiamat. In Genesis, God hovers over the water. He hovers over to home. To home, water, they're all connected to chaos. And that's why we believe it's connected to the word Tiamat, the Babylonian god of chaos. So this writer is saying that God is separate from the water, above it. He's separate from chaos, above it. That means this story of creation is the true story of creation. The writer is trying to tell us that our God is the one God who truly creates. He creates out of chaos, not through it. It's fascinating stuff and I could talk about it for a while. Yes, sorry, yes, let's move on. We're going to focus on the seven days of creation. The first six where God does something, he creates something. And then on the seventh day, he rests. I want to bring your attention to those six days of creation. Now, can anyone tell me what God created on the first day? So I guess we're just reusing old jokes now, huh? But yes, that's correct. On day one, God created light. Look, I even have a fancy infographic to keep track. On day two, God separated the waters from the earth from the waters in the sky. He created the sky and the sea. On day three, God separated the waters of the land, creating dry ground for plants to grow. Okay, so those were the first three days, and as you can maybe tell, God seems to be doing a lot of setup. On all three days, God is creating spaces. He separates the light from the dark. The space for the light is the day, and the space for the dark is the night. He separates the waters, and he creates the sky and the sea. And then he pushes back the sea to create land. He's creating spaces. He's ordering his creation. Because next, he's going to fill them up. On day four, God fills the day and the night sky with the sun, moon, and stars. On day five, God fills the sky and the sea with birds and fish. And on day six, God fills the land with animals and then us, humans. God spends these three days doing something a little different. On the first three days, he spends it creating spaces. And then on the next three days, he spends it filling those spaces. The day and the night with the sun, moon, and stars. The sky with birds and the sea with fish. And then the land with animals and humans. This is a very special type of rhyming poetry. It looks like one of those large ones with plenty of space in the margins. Oh, baby. I want to read with you, because your Bible's got pictures. No, 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 no. Oh, man. No one should ever call that rhyming poetry. It would come far too close to calling it art. Anyways, this type of rhyming poetry is done with images. Here, let's take a look. 
Day one rhymes with day four, light and dark, sun, moon, and stars. Day two rhymes with day five, sky and sea, birds and fish. Day three rhymes with day six, land, animals, and humans. First God creates a space, orders it, and then he fills it. God then rests on day seven. Everything is done. He has finished his creation works, and everything is in order. This is the next detail that I want to bring to your attention. Remember back at the beginning of Genesis 1, everything was in chaos. Now, everything is ordered. God takes everything and moves it from chaos into order. From day zero, before God starts creating, to day seven, when he's finished. Isn't this just a fascinating aspect of the story of creation? I love it so much. But it actually becomes a point of tension or disagreement within the church. I think we often focus too closely to the how part of the story, particularly how God created the world. When we do this, we often miss out on so much. Just look at this morning. Look at how much we learned by asking the question, why did God create this world? And to tell us why God created the world, let's go to Lachlan. God loves to create. Thanks, Lachlan. And he's right. Through the creation story, we know that our God loves to bring order to chaos, that our God loves to create. And if God loves his creation, enough to send his son down into the chaos to become dirt to live here, shouldn't we find some compassion in that? Shouldn't we find our drive to be the stewards of this garden that we've been blessed with? I hope so. Because if God loves to create and God loves his creation, and we were made in his image, then we love to create, and we love his creation.